The NCR took back Nelson. Maybe they can win this war after all. Hey, you're the one who's been going around helping people around here, right? The king says to keep up the good work, and said to give you this. Mick and Ralph's is located just before the East Gate. Come to Mick and Ralph's for... Hey baby, there's more of this waiting for you inside. in this place i tell you last night some girl was pounding on hey come on pal i'm trying to put on a show here you're welcome all right then make it snappy kid this isn't exactly a lucrative career enterprise here if you believe my mother since she first laid eyes on me 
First thing she said was, boy, that's a funny looking kid. I guess I got a face only a mother could love because no one else would give me the time of day. Hey, maybe you can help me. See, I can never tell when it's lunchtime. It breaks better than a shot. Less chance of lead poisoning. Hey, if you know any gigs hiring, I'll work cheap. Real cheap. I'll take peanuts. I'll take the shells. The name's Knight. Billy Knight. And this here's what a lifelong career in comedy will get you. Oi. That's exactly my point, kid. Exactly my point! Sure, later. You're wasting no time in making a name for yourself around here, huh? Fucking Crocker. Couldn't find his ass if it wasn't on his backside. place like this would exist. Aha! The brave photographer returns. Good to see you. Oh, that's wonderful. Just what I need. Thank you, brave one. Here's some compensation for your work. You have earned it, my friend. Now I can finally unveil my masterpieces to the world, all thanks to you. Come visit me again sometime. Excuse me, but I'm busy. Hi, what can I do for you? You saw our front sign, didn't you? This is where all the beautiful signs of the Strip become a reality. It all comes from Michelangelo's imagination. We do a little work here and there too, sure, but he's the real artist. He's the reason the Strip shines like a star at night. Mike's imagined and built every sign, billboard, and light you'll see around here. I've been here over a year now. Though I'm not one to get tired for long. I plan to roam the wasteland once I'm ready. The people need light and kindness. There's too much fear and pain out there already. He's the reason. Check out the back of the shop. Bye. Evening. Can I help you? 
You can find him in the main embassy building, inside the gate and to your left. This is the NCR embassy, our little slice of heaven on the strip. The main building houses administration, while the other building is the MP headquarters on the strip. The usual? Troopers getting drunk and causing problems? Like that's a surprise to anyone. Hell, I plan on getting drunk once I'm done with my shift. Maybe even head over to Gamora for a good time. Sir. Beats being on patrol. I tell you, something Honestly, stinks about you, this sir. monorail attack. I tell you, something stinks about this monorail attack. Welcome to the NCR Embassy. How can I help you? The Embassy offices are to your left, while the barracks and living quarters are to the right. If you're looking for a history lesson, I suggest you talk to Ambassador Crocker. I don't have time to give my life story to everyone that passes through. Is there something I can actually help you with? Ambassador Crocker can be found in his office through the door to my right and at the end of the hall. Sir? I hear you've been meeting with Mr. House in the Lucky 38. Hmm. I bet you think you're pretty special, don't you? Special or not, stay out of trouble, and more importantly, stay out of my way. Not much to tell. Keeping the troopers in line and monitoring the strip keeps me busy. It's my job, and I'm gonna do it well. Now, if that's all, I've got work to do. Yeah, more the usual. We're keeping an eye on the troopers to make sure they don't do anything stupid. Yeah, the only stupid one we've had lately is Private Irwin. He's starting to cause more trouble than he's worth. Eh, Crocker isn't too bad. He mostly stays in his office now. If you have any questions about the embassy, you should ask him. He'll talk your ear off. Bye. My buddies at Camp McCarran are breathing easy now that the Fiend's leader is dead. Don't mind trailblazing as long as we got the ammo. And whiskey. Hello. I'll tell you, something stinks about this monorail attack. So you're the one that went into the Lucky 38. I bet that was pretty creepy. What can I do for you? Now, she may be a bit of a hard-ass, but she's the best damn captain we've had here. I'd be careful around her. You don't want to get on our bad side. What have you heard? I know people think I'm a little on the wild side, but I'm just trying to have fun, you know? Just because I happen to get into fights and like to pull pranks doesn't mean anything. Us troopers mostly come to the Strip for our R&R. &R. We blow off some steam by gambling, drinking, partying, or fighting. If you're looking for a good time, I'd suggest hitting up Gamora. The girls there are pretty nice, if you know what I mean. He's a little stiff and stuffy. Doesn't leave the office that much. Always surrounds himself with papers and reports. I've always wanted to play a prank on him, but there's no way I could ever pull that off without getting in trouble from Captain Pappas. <laughs> yeah, I got a few ideas that I'm working on. Maybe I'll let you in on it once I have something. Sir?
What is it? I'm glad you could make it. I have something I wanted to discuss with you. It's a very important matter, and I have a strong feeling you're the perfect person for the job. I'm sure you've noticed that things are a little tense around here with all the issues between the NCR, the Legion, and Mr. House. It doesn't take a genius to see that something big is going to happen soon. To be honest with you, the NCR is in a tight spot. But if we fail now, it's the people here that are going to suffer the most. I'm not willing to let that happen. And I don't think you're the kind of person that would either. To the northeast is a settlement. The locals here call them boomers. They are sitting on a munition stockpile that would be invaluable to us. I would like you to get in contact with them, and then do whatever it takes to convince them to help us. Unfortunately, the boomers keep to themselves and are, let's say, hostile to all outsiders. That's why I need someone like you. Someone with your background and reputation would have a better chance of reaching them than anyone I have available. In exchange for your help, you would receive complete amnesty for any past crimes against the NCR, as well as additional benefits and perks. Do you think you would be able to do this for me? That's excellent news. So they'll help us, right? Let me know as soon as you have an answer from them. Interested in politics, huh? Well, grab a seat and get comfortable. I've been in politics quite a while now. Always had the drive to do it even when I was young. It's just something I was drawn to. I started my career over 20 years ago back in the NCR as the local mayor and worked my way up from there. I managed President Kimball's first run for a seat on the council. I suppose that's why I have this ambassadorship. I was elected to this post seven years ago. I'm the third NCR representative to serve here in Vegas. Now, I've had my share of ups and downs along the way, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. That's it. Anything else you wish to know? It's the same old stuff around here. Gambling, debauchery, drunkenness. It's all here. I'm getting a little old for it, however. If you want more information, try talking to some of the other guys around here. I don't get out of the office much anymore. I can provide a quick history lesson, if that's what you're looking for. In 2274, President Kimball sent the NCR army into the Mojavean force with the objective of occupying and repairing Hoover Dam. Rangers and army scouts had confirmed that the dam was basically unoccupied and could be restored to an operable condition. Upon arriving at the dam, however, they discovered that a large force of tribals and robots had occupied it. This was our introduction to the three families, the Securitrons and, of course, Mr. House. Using his Securitrons as intermediaries, Mr. House called for parlay. He claimed his forces had occupied Hoover Dam in order to safeguard it for our arrival, and that he was ready to turn it over to us, so long as we could agree to terms. Those terms became the Treaty of New Vegas. The treaty recognized Mr. House's sovereignty over the Strip and granted us rights to establish military bases at the Dam and McCarran Airport. The NCR is legally permitted to send 95% of the electricity produced by the Dam to our home states. The remaining 5% goes to the Strip. The treaty actually makes it illegal for the NCR to prevent its citizens or troops on furlough from visiting the Strip. Once on the Strip, our citizens are subject to arrest or punishment by House of Securitrons, though that's a rare occurrence. Our troops enjoy a different status. It's illegal for the Securitrons to take action against them. Of course, it's also illegal for our troops to carry firearms on the Strip, so there isn't much trouble they can get into. Our military police does an adequate job of keeping the troops on furlough in line. I don't envy them that task. The embassy was established a few weeks after the treaty was signed. Basically, Mr. House handed us a dumpy little building he had no interest in renovating. I'm the third ambassador to hold this post, and the first, I think, to accept its limitations. My predecessors had ambitions of engineering the annexation of the Mojave. They thought they'd convince Mr. House to join up. I've never even spoken to the man or whatever he is. Maybe the situation will change once we've beaten the Legion once and for all. Now we mostly just keep track of the NCR citizens and troopers around and make sure they don't get in trouble, but that's Captain Papa's job. 
I keep myself busy with paperwork and reports that get sent back to the NCR. It's mostly busy work, but every once in a while, we make progress. I hope you've returned with good news. Are they willing to help the NCR? Let me know as soon as you have an answer from them. Goodbye. Hello? Holding my breath. It's good to have a friend of the... Morning. Nelson's back in our hands. I hope we can defend it. My buddies at McCarran will find the asshole that destroyed our monorail. Nelson's back in our hands. I hope we can defend it this time. I'll tell you, something stinks about this monorail attack. Security laps for the monorail is a huge embarrassment.
Help you? Morning. Hey. Almost out of caps. I hear a troublesome legion camp got razed to the ground. Without leadership, the fiends are as good as dead. Beg your pardon, but could I trouble you to turn over your weapons? I'm afraid those are the rules. If you don't like it, you can take your business elsewhere. My deepest apologies for the slightest inconvenience. You have my assurance that everything will be returned upon your departure. But we simply can't have anyone waving their weapons around in the hotel. It's not the atmosphere we wish to cultivate. Please, enjoy your stay. They'll be handled with the utmost security in our bank. Adieu. I am at your service. Morning. Welcome to Top Shelf. The drinks cost twice as much during happy hour, but they draw twice the attention, too. Another satisfied customer. Farewell. Beg your pardon, stranger, but I'm looking for someone. You ain't seen a young man with dark brown hair and a white hat on lately, have you? <sighs> ain't nobody got one darn piece of news about my boy. Not one lousy speck of information. Ain't got one Brahmin unaccounted for across a dozen ranches, but I'm here for an hour and my own son just up and disappears on me. Made me a special arrangement with the hotel. They want to do business with me, they got to play by my rules. A lot of people out there resent success, might want to take a swipe at me. This makes them think twice. If I'd have been thinking, though, I'd have had him watching my boy instead. Then none of this would have happened. My boy, Ted. He was right here. I didn't leave him but a minute. I told him to stay put while I talked some things over with the White Glove folks. He was never one to stay tied down to a spot, though. Gets that from his mother. Got most of my staff out looking for him now. I'd be out myself, but I keep hoping he'll show up back here. Of course, if he does that, I'll whoop him till his skinny hide turns to leather for putting me through this. But that don't mean I wouldn't be grateful. That's between me and the White Glove Society. But let's just say they control the food supply around here, and I got lots of food to give. But that ain't as welcome as you might think. That's what they call themselves, the folk that run this place. They're the ones dressed all fancy with their bow ties and shiny dresses. 
Some of them got masks, too. Real hard to trust folks like that. A couple of them show their faces, and that's who I do my business with. I don't talk to none of the other ones. Yep, got a whole mess of Brahmins to my name. Bighorners, too. Used to just have the one ranch, but land was easy to grab before the soldiers moved in. Before I knew it, I was running one of the biggest ranching operations east of California. Now everywhere I go, folks I never even met shake my hand and call me Mr. Gunderson. Don't quite know what to make of that. I'd be more than happy to have you. Heck, I'll hire anybody with a pair of legs and at least one good eye at this point. There'd be a lot of money in it for you if you can get him back to me safe. And if he ain't, you can bet I'll pay for the names of the sons of bitches responsible. I'll be here. There are a lot of rumors going around about the White Glove Society. You watch yourself I heard around, they used Mr. To be Gunderson. Tribals. Our executive chef Felipe hey, is the toast any of idea new how somebody gets His into Brahmin the White Glove Wellington Society? is absolutely There are a lot of rumors going somebody. around about the White Glove. What can I get you? Society. I heard they used to be tribals. To eat at the gourmand is to spoil the palate. Hey. Howdy. Good seeing you again. Bighorn is my trade since I was a young'un. I confess, it's hard living these days, kid. The wasteland ain't the same anymore. Darn far it is, our ranch. Ethel would be happy to yap about that. I got more important things in mind, kid. Bighorn is my trade since I was a young'un. I confess, it's hard living these days, kid. I got... I hear you. I'll oh, be damned. You mean the young Gunderson? That's a shaved tail if I ever saw one. He's got less sense than a Brahmin at a crossroads. I'd not be one to complain if he got lost for good, kid. If it makes Hex suffer, then I'm all for it. Sure, kid. And I still hump like a buck in spring. That Gunderson's a liar and born of a viper, I swear. Kid, look around you. There's poison and death everywhere. And people like Heck are responsible for the misery we suffer. What right do they have to continue with their mischief and killing, huh? Hell, a good thrashing is what I want to give them. But I see your point, kid. Things will never change without us good folks. All right. I'm gonna get Ethel far away from this damn city and head back home. There's a worthy life waiting for us there. Thanks for your help, kid. So long. Welcome back, friend. Sorry, but I don't have time to talk right now. I'm going back to the ranch. My buddies at McCarran will find the asshole that destroyed our monorail. Without leadership, the fiends are... I bet it feels real nice to be carrying those weapons around on the Strip. That damn Mr. House has forbid any NCR military personnel from carrying any sort of firearms on the Strip. Well, except for Captain Pappas. Mr. House still doesn't trust the NCR. A word of advice. The Securitrons won't put up with any funny stuff out there, so don't do anything stupid. This your first time on the Strip?
Well, it's time to pop your Vegas cherry, friend. I'm sure you'll have a blast and be drunk and capless in no time. I can give you a bit more information about the various casinos if you're not sure on where to get started. Well, there's the Lucky 38, Ultralux, Gamora, and the Tops. Which one do you want to know about? The Ultralux is the nicest casino on the Strip. Real high-end, extravagant, and expensive. Best you have a lot of caps if you want to go there. Gamora is the favorite of the NCR troops on the Strip. If you like girls, alcohol, gambling, and drugs, then Gamora is just the place for you. The Tops is the cool place to be right now. Lots of entertainment and shows going on there as well as the gambling. If you want to catch a show and have a few drinks, you should definitely hit up the Aces Theater in the Tops. Don't know much about it, to tell the truth. That's where Mr. House and his Securitrons are set up, and no one's been in there as long as people can remember. Probably best that you just ignore it. Well, there's Vault 21 and the NCR Embassy. Both places are located on the south side of the Strip. Vault 21 is a small hotel and gift shop. It's not as nice as the casinos, but it's a whole hell of a lot cheaper. The NCR Embassy is the headquarters for the NCR on the Strip. The Ambassador and his offices are there as well as the MP headquarters. So, as good as dead. Report any suspicious activity near the monorail. My buddy's at Camp McCarran, a breathing... Crocker can kiss my sweet republic ass. Get out. The belly is, is for wishes. Do not stand in the fountains. Who wants to swim? Why? We've heard fine. about you from the officers at the Please remove your draw from the bottom of the fountain. And gather your clothes and belongings. You've been making a new piece of Please come try your luck. I hope it's on your come side. Come on, big man. It's the law, Wanna girls. Wanna dance? Hit Gamora. Are you going to spank us? I so love handcuffs. Beg your pardon, but could I trouble you to... My deepest... But we simply... How may I be of service? No, not from the likes of you, I'm afraid. I don't think you'd have the stomach for it. Better look elsewhere. My, such a popular question. I suppose it is only natural to see us and wonder what it is that makes us special. The White Glove Society has only just made itself known to the public, of course. But our pedigree was established over generations. Were we always so refined? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said yes. 
But I've always felt we were destined for a place atop modern society. And now, here we are. Not everyone can wear the finest clothes and eat the finest foods, obviously. That's just the reality we live in. But surely we can agree that the most tasteful, sophisticated people are the most deserving. And that's what the White Glove Society is all about. Indeed. I've heard you have to make reservations at the Gorman years in advance. Welcome to the Ultralux. I do hope it exceeds your every expectation. What else? Mr. Gunderson and I have been discussing his livestock. It's put us in a rather delicate position, you see, his coming here. Not that we aren't grateful for his generous offer. But our executive chef, Philippe, has transformed Brahmin steak into a delicacy. He really is a genius. Everyone wants it. But a delicacy is just that, delicate. If everyone can get it, it ceases to be a delicacy. It becomes a perfectly ordinary staple. And if the gourmand serves staples, it would no longer draw the caliber of people it deserves. It would be a diner or a family restaurant. So as much as we'd all love for there to be enough steak for everyone, I'm afraid there are more important things to consider. This again? I thought this was all settled. I answered every one of that investigator's questions to his satisfaction and gave all the help I could. I know our reputation hasn't always been spotless, but that's all in the past now. How some people can't get over it is beyond me. For the last time, the White Glove Society has never and will never consume human flesh for any reason. It's written in the Charter. Now, didn't I already tell you that we don't do that sort of thing? We do not engage in cannibalism here under any circumstances. Though we haven't always been the White Glove Society. There was another time, a dark time, when we went by a different name. But that's all changed now. We've evolved past such base impulses since settling into our new home. I've seen to it that those days are behind us. You disgust me. How dare you say such a filthy thing in my establishment? I ought to have you arrested. You'll kindly mind your tongue or we shan't speak any further. I do, but one can hardly call it work. I think of myself as a caretaker rather than a common laborer. I suppose it is a labor of love if it can be called labor at all. We at the White Glove Society are all responsible for maintaining the beauty and class of the Ultra Lux. And as its founder, I suppose it falls to me to decide how we go about it. There was an investigator who came through here last week. He'd been hired by a young man whose bride-to-be went missing during their stay here. Well, you can already guess what probably happened, can't you? It seems perfectly likely that she got cold feet and ran off. And that young groom just didn't have a clue, the poor dear. Why, yes, I think so, if he hasn't checked out yet, that is. I had our maitre d' Mortimer offer him a complimentary room for as long as it took for him to be satisfied. You see, the White Glove Society remains the very picture of courtesy, even in the face of such impolite accusations. We have nothing to hide here. A man? Well, then this... Well, this can't be. Two disappearances in my hotel? What will people say? I'm going to have a word with my staff about security on the premises. Whether these people are found or not, our guests simply must feel safe in their own rooms. Ta-ta! Did you know the strip's all stirred up lately? How may I be of service, sir? Ah, yes. 
I've heard that one too. Jealous people say such nasty things. I feel sorry for them. Good. And you know what it is to be discreet in matters of nutrition. Perhaps you can help me. I'm in a bind. I've been planning an exquisite society dinner, but there's a bit of a problem with the main course. He's got a powerful and temperamental father. Yes, the wrong person. We scouted the right one for weeks. The heir to a mercantile empire. Sort of a black sheep. He cut ties with his family and left their estate to wander. He was ideal, corn-fed and well-to-do. But no one to miss him if he were to disappear. Unfortunately, the trap my subordinate set for him failed. And as he escaped, he saw their faces. Now he's wary. I asked for a last-minute replacement, and they stole the son of the most dangerous Brahmin baron in New Vegas while he stayed at this very hotel. Needless to say, this could be a disaster if things aren't put back the way they should be. And I still need somebody reputable to serve for dinner. Strictly speaking, we're no longer allowed to eat people. But I'm hoping the right person and preparation might sway Marjorie to see things my way. I need a replacement. And I need the boy taken care of. The replacement must be healthy and well-bred. One can't very well make steak from gristle. With so little time, we'll have to go after our original choice, Carlisle St. Clair. He lives in a shack north of here. For freshness, we need him alive. If you could send him here or knock him out with this and drag him into the dumpster next to his house, we can do the rest. Ted Gunderson is his name. It would be simplest if we could convince him this was all an unfortunate misunderstanding. But if he won't listen, we can't very well let him go. He'll have to be slaughtered and served. Then we wouldn't need the replacement. But you would need to deal with his father, heck. Perhaps if you could smear some of Ted's blood around his father's hotel room, you could frame him. No. Everyone he meets, he tells the same story. That his son disappeared from the casino, not from his room. He'll look guilty. Splendid, splendid. The boy is being held in the kitchen beneath the gourmand. Here are some keys that will allow you access to him. The elder Gunderson is staying in our penthouse. I understand he's hired security, so be careful if you go up there. And our Mr. St. Clair resides to the north. He rarely strays far from his house, and he surrounded it with booby traps. Private investigator. Ah, yes, I remember the gentleman. This was about the missing bride. Such an awful thing. I do hope he finds her whereabouts. If I might pry, have you found something that will help his investigation? Good. I hope that young man gets some closure after all he's been through. Now, ordinarily, we don't give out guest information, but I think, given the circumstances, he'll want to speak with you. Let's see. He hasn't checked out yet. If you head back to the hotel rooms, his will be one floor directly above you after you exit the lobby. I hope we can put this whole matter to rest at last. From the smell of her, I'd say we can skip the whiskey marinade. But other than her liver, she seems to be in working order. Very well. If you're able to convince young Mr. Gunderson to return to his father, replace him in the freezer with your friend and we'll have a deal. If you head back to the hotel... I hear... I heard they bought in Cecil's. Not sure who this friend of yours is, but if he's looking down on Vegas, he's either God or the moon. At Not sure if I chose it or it chose me. Dad ran a bar a long time ago and it was a labor of love, Mom said. Didn't sound like it made her happy. Still, I'm guessing I got some of Dad's love of whiskey in me because the burn suits me fine. Used to call me Whiskey Rose back west. 
before I punched enough people, so now they say it. But quiet, and when I'm not around. Yeah, on account of my name. And the blossoms on my cheeks when I drink too much. Won most of those fights, too. Can take a hell of a punch and give it right back when I've got a bottle in me. It's all in how you drink it, though. There's a trick to it. When we pass the bottle, I'll show you how it's done. There's usually a bar in every stop along the road. Helps me sleep. Well, not really, but I tell myself that. Sometimes I have to brew it myself if I'm too far from a bar. Not quality, but I'm for anything that takes the edge off the day. Yeah. What else are you gonna do with an empty bottle? Wait for it to refill itself? Get me some ingredients out of the Mojave, an empty bottle, a little time, and I'll keep us stocked. All right, then. From California, just for this bath. Our guys put the monorail back to work. Your merchant friend would make a fine NCR one. There are a lot of rumors going around about the White Glove Society. I heard they used to be tribals. Top shelf is the premier bar on the strip. The drinks are overpriced, but that's the whole point. They say it's safer to travel now that fiends are retreating, but I'd still look out for trouble. That fiend leader shouldn't have messed with... You know the strip's all stirred up lately? I heard they brought in sea salts from California just for this bath. Somewhere I need to be right now.
Who are you? Matchbook? What about the man I gave it to? Oh my goodness, me. They must know he was talking to someone on the inside. They'll be watching everyone closer now. I knew this was a mistake. The girl, the one who disappeared. I know what happened to her. Because I distracted her fiancé while they took her. Well, I'm not proud of it, but I had to. They could see I was having second thoughts. Some of the white gloves began meeting privately a while back. Started talking about how we'd lost our identity. I started attending because I thought it was about changing our politics. Then they started talking about returning to the old ways, and there was no way out. They'd kill me for the things I heard them say. Mortimer, if he realizes it was me the investigator was planning to meet, he'll have me killed. Yes, the White Glove Society strictly forbids eating humans, but we weren't always the White Glove Society. Mortimer and some of the others have regressed to the old ways. They've taken many people over the last few months, but always from freeside or secluded places where they wouldn't be missed. It wasn't enough. Lately, they've gone for tourists here on the Strip, even in the hotel. I guess that's the hazard of a cannibal becoming a gourmet. It's hard to please a refined palate. He's alive, as far as I know. They're trying to keep him fresh. Mortimer has special plans for him. The White Glove Society has a banquet every night at 7. It's in our private section. Mortimer wants to reintroduce humans into our cuisine. Since eating people is a crime we punish by death, he's going to do it in secret. After everyone has eaten it, he'll tell them. With no real way to punish everyone, in Mortimer's mind anyway, their minds will be open to the idea of eating people as a delicacy. I don't know exactly. I wasn't in on it. I think some of them have stopped trusting me. But you can bet they're keeping them near the gourmand. Our chef, Philippe, has an obsession with fresh ingredients. It'd be back in the members only section, so you'll have to be careful. Don't be seen, and more importantly, don't let them see Ted in the open. It's guarded both at the lobby entrance and in the access tunnels leading from the main restaurant. I could sponsor you as an honorary member. The White Gloves are always looking for people who can elevate their status. You'd certainly fit the bill with everything you've done around here. Otherwise, you'll have to find some way to get inside quietly. It won't be easy and it'll be harder still to get them out. They might, but to him, the legacy of returning to the old ways is worth his own life. I don't think he expects it, though. I don't either. Nothing is more important to the society than being on the cutting edge of New Vegas cuisine. Mortimer's idea will appeal to that need. He just has to get them over the taboo. That may be true, but I wouldn't recommend it. He's built a reputation, and it isn't for calmness and impartiality. He's not what he looks like. They call him Hurricane Heck. The man built his empire by hiring mercenaries to drive off the competition. Lately, he's been attacking our Brahmin suppliers so he can take over their business. He's the sort to pound in a nail with a wrecking ball. If you give him the whole story on this, he'd be liable to raise the entire hotel. And God knows what he'd do to the rest of the strip. But you can bet that it is guarded. I, you. Hmm. Well, they'll all be sampling pre-war wines before the meal. Maybe it's as simple as drugging them. Although that wouldn't stop any future kidnappings. You'd have to expose Mortimer, but he's going to confess anyway. What if? What if his revelation were a lie? What if no one had eaten human flesh but him? If you could somehow replace Philippe in the kitchen and serve a convincing substitute instead. You could walk Ted right through the middle of that room after Mortimer speaks, and then he'd have some explaining to do. Philippe has been trying to approximate the taste of human flesh for years. He must have a recipe somewhere. Let's plan on meeting again as soon as... Wait, did you hear something? Were you followed?
Welcome to the Ultralux. I do hope it exceeds your every expectation. Why, yes, of course. The White Glove Society is the most exclusive club in all of New Vegas. Perhaps the entire world. It's only natural that you'd need a sponsor from within the club who can vouch for your good name. Originally, we didn't allow anyone else in, you see. Founding members only. We thought exclusivity would make us the envy of everyone who's anyone. And it has. But then I had the idea to allow honorary members. Lower in status, naturally. But it just makes people want to be us even more. And the right people could certainly do wonders for our image. Celebrities, philanthropists, we want only the very best. And you most certainly fit the bill. Given your deeds on the strip alone, I can safely say that you would be a prized addition to our honorary ranks. You have my full support, and you are welcome to join us at our nightly banquets in our special section of the Gourmand. I hope to see you there. Ta-ta! Greetings. You, what do you think you're doing? First he's too trusting, now he doesn't trust any of us. It addles the senses. I suppose caution is the desirable course at this point. It's all of our necks if something goes afoul. Why are you standing still? Do you think the world waits for you while you stand there drooling? Get back out there and get to work. Oh, really? So despite your filthy face and your vacant expression and your complete lack of human dignity, you're telling me you're not a server? What kind of harebrained fucking psychobabble bullshit is that? I yell at people because I like yelling at people and because they fucking deserve it. Not because Mumsy and Daddykins didn't hug me enough. Oh, I see how it is. You think because my father walked out on us when I was five, now I have to yell at people. Or because my mother was a deranged chem fiend who regularly brought strange men home who told me to call them uncle. Or because my sisters would lock me in a shipping crate when they didn't want me around. And my brother... God, I'd forgotten about that. How could they do that to me? I can't stay here. I need to be alone. Forget about the fucking banquet. You know what? You can do it. You be the star chef. Take my recipes. It won't fill the hole, though. Just remember that. You'll always feel empty. How may I assist? At once. My daddy's gonna kill all you bastards once he finds out what you done to me. My daddy sent you? God damn it. I almost died in here. What the hell took you so long? It's just one damn hotel. Who did this to me anyway? They hit me over the head before I got a look at him. 
All right, fine. I'm right behind you. Bitter Springs. Should have bet we'd kill the fiend's leader. Our guys put the monorail back to work. Don't need this right now. You like that? So long ago, when we were found together, not as members, but Serving as up some hurt. As a clan. Over here! You like that? You're just in time for your ass whipping. Had enough. Hello there. You like that? Let's paint this place red. Come on! Come on! This is hopeless! 
I'm hit. Had enough? That how you want to play, huh? A doctor's bag and some whiskey, if you don't mind. To eat at the Gorman is to spoil the palace. Our executive chef bring Philippe to eat is the else. toast of New Vegas. <sighs> Don't His need this right now. Is absolutely sublime. You like that? Let's start this dance. Come on. You're just in time for your... Murderer! You like that? I'm going to find you. You like that? You like that? Tell me good news. He's here? Bless you. I thought he was a goner for sure. Listen, you do what you gotta do to find him. I'd send my men with you, but I'm worried they'd kill Ted if we got close. Reckon you might need one of these. Take it. Just don't wave it around here where they might take it from you. That tower on the strip, the one you can see for miles, I hear it ain't sealed up no more. That tower on the strip, the one you can see for miles, tell me good news. Tell me good news.
Tell me good news. The fiends are running for their lives. That'll show everyone what we do to our enemies. Come on! Oh my god. Ted, are you all right? Quit your hollering. I'm fine. You got me my boy back. I got no words. Now, I hope you didn't do no harm to whoever's responsible for this. I want to skin their hides myself. Well, that does it. None of them maniacs will ever do business with Hag Gunderson long as they live. Hell, I'll put me together a damn blockade. Hit them where it hurts. They control the food? Well, there ain't gonna be no food. Not for anybody in this whole damn town. It's a goddamn monument to inhumanity. Let them starve. Biggest favor anyone's ever done this hellhole. I don't like this place. Whole strip, really. Ever since I got here, the stink of it has flooded my nostrils. But you got a point. They're already hell-bent on depravity here. All I'd be doing is helping them along. All right. Well, I promised you I'd make it worth your while. So here you are. Try not to lose it all at the same casino. You know, if you knew what you were doing, I could have been out of there hours ago. You watch yourself around, Mr. Gunderson. The fountain is a restricted area. 